the mo main motivation is actually, it's part of my thesis, but it's not the most scientific motivation. The, the relevant one is, is that, well, on one side, we, we know we have a substantive part of democratic theory t telling us that uh, competition is relevant for democracy and responsiveness, is beneficial and good for democracy. Uh, someone may disagree, but there is a substantive theory of democracy pointing at this. But on the other side, uh, we also know a lot about uh, neighboring concepts of responsiveness, so promise fulfillment, mandate responsiveness, congruence, and dyadic representation, for instance. But uh, slightly less about government responsiveness, policy responsiveness. So this paper tries to uh, combine these two, uh, these two kind of different literature and, uh, and see actually how um, how competition affect uh, responsiveness. Now, uh, the, the questions I was thinking about in this paper are basically that. Uh, so these competitive incentives uh, do have an effect, but uh, I mean, uh, when, for instance, governments are vulnerable, they are afraid of losing the elections, uh, they will be more likely to emphasize, for instance, or de-emphasize some issues in their agendas, or they will be more likely to respond to what the public wants, or maybe uh, it's the opposite, uh, it happens that maybe they are safe and they want to respond because they are safe. And I try to uh, investigate this question somehow in the paper. And so, uh, yesterday we've seen that we might uh, conceive responsiveness under, let's say, the several stages or orders. And this paper is about rhetorical responsiveness. So, simply what I mean for rhetorical responsiveness is that when uh, the, uh, in the salience of an issue uh, in, increase in the public, and uh, let's say at time t, and uh, at time t plus one, uh, the government emphasize the issue in the in, in his agenda we, we we can have a kind of responsive uh, move so i would like to know that uh, in this case responsiveness is not simply attention because someone will say well you're not talking about responsiveness you're simply talking about attention but not really in the sense that uh, there are uh, first of all consequences uh, in the in policy outputs and outcomes in because some part of the policy agenda is actually translated into, uh, into policy output. And there are some studies uh, that confirm this. And uh, so it's not really, uh, let's say, cheap talk, as Daniel would say uh, in this presentation, but it's something uh, substantial uh, because, uh, I mean, executive speeches uh, are institutionalized practice, so they, are, uh, they involve a kind of uh, cost and risk for, for, for the government. So, uh, I start with, uh, uh, let's say, different kind of uh, competitive incentives, let's say. So on one side we have uh, theory of issue ownership and issue salience that tell us how parties compete and for instance parties emphasize or de-emphasize certain issues and probably they emphasize the issues they uh, own the ownership of, they have an advantage on these issues and try to instead blur some issues in which they have a bad reputation for instance. And, uh, but actually we have also other cases in which there is a kind of uh, issue convergence and trespassing uh, when uh, also governments and uh, parties emphasize also um, issues that they don't really own. It depends actually on the strategies of the level of competition. And on the other side, we, uh, there is the main probably question of the paper. So uh, uh, what's the role of, uh, of electoral vulnerability here? So what do they do when they are, uh, for instance, electorally uh, safe, they, don't, they are not vulnerable? We know that, uh, in general, there is a, a lot of responsiveness to public opinion uh, by itself and when the issue is salient. So then what is the role of, uh, of vulnerability here? And so, uh, 
we can have two different stories here, in the sense that one that I would call the, the, the kind of vulnerability story, which means that uh, this is the one that we will know from democra democratic theory, which is that if governments are afraid of losing the elections, they will be more led to uh, be responsive to what the public want in order to be re-elected. So this is the kind of uh, story, and this finds some evidence in the literature uh, when um, the higher the, the, this electoral uncertainty, the higher responsiveness. <laughs> but it's not the only one. Uh, we have also a kind of contrasting uh, story which, is, uh, which um, incorporates this issue ownership element. So, uh, so this relationship between uh, vulnerability and responsiveness might be mediated by, uh, by issue competence. And here we see that, for instance, uh, Parties that are popular are uh, fine with the election polls. They uh, so they are uh, uh, they have a good reputation on several issues. So they will be uh, more free to uh, to respond to the public. So they have uh, they might have less constraints. Uh, but on the other side, uh, parties that are unpopular or vulnerable in this sense uh, might instead tend to focus on their own issues because they. Uh, this is what uh, uh, they can emphasize in order to, uh, let's say, climb the, the, the ladder of, uh, of uh, popularity again. So uh, I try to, uh, in the paper, to, to, to put together these, uh, these premises and I came out with some exploratory uh, hypothesis. So on one side we might, uh, we, we might have implications, let's say, for the policy agenda and uh, for responsiveness on the other side. So we might think that uh, when, actually the, this is the, the, the first one is the story I was telling uh, before, that when the government is vulnerable, it will be more likely to emphasize the issues that, uh, that it, uh, it has an advantage on. And uh, on the other side, when instead the government is safe electorally, uh, it might be the case that it can also, uh, uh, since it's safe, it doesn't uh, have concerns of being re-elected, it might also emphasize those issues in which it's, uh, it doesn't have an advantage on. I, and probably this is a more risky uh, situation, but uh, literature on issue convergence might also point at this one. And uh, well, on the other side, we have also implications for uh, rhetorical responsiveness. So, uh, of course, uh, uh, if the governments are vulnerable, they might be more likely to uh, sorry, yeah, to, to, to be responsive to what the public wants, and, uh, uh, and especially if they have an advantage on the issue. Or on the other side, uh, if governments uh, are instead uh, safe and they don't have an advantage, they don't hold an advantage on, they, also responsiveness might, might occur in this case uh, because of the safeness, let's say, uh, thesis. Uh, so this is a picture that tries to combine uh, these, uh, these expectations. So you see that there is a, a direct effect of these two main competitive incentives on, uh, on the dependent variable, on the, on the policy agenda, uh, but also uh, these two uh, incentives uh, <coughs> affect uh, the responsiveness relationship between uh, public and uh, the public and the government. So responsiveness is then seen as a, <coughs> in a dynamic way, let's say. And so uh, the, the data I'm using for the uh, for the um, for the dependent variable are taken from the Comparative Agenda project, and I collected this data for these four countries here. As you can see, is a really uh, balanced sample <laughs> with actually this because the, um, the hard thing was actually to find data over time uh, in all these uh, in all these dimensions so uh, executive speeches as the, as the dependent variable and public issue salience and vulnerability and and uh, and issue competence so as you can see there's a quite uh, high correspondence between what are the public priorities and what are the government priorities uh, if they just switch and these are uh, the, the public is really interested in in the in, in economic situations and uh, and defense uh, and international affairs rather the government <coughs> try to uh, um, emphasize uh, in the in, in the policy agenda uh, these two uh, 
these two uh, macro topics. So, uh, as I was saying, the dependent variable is the uh, executive species. So, the, um, we know that uh, the governments of better representatives of governments, they uh, every year uh, at the beginning of a parliamentary session, they deliver a speech. So, it's a kind of institutionalized practice. And, uh, and this can be seen as a reliable, uh, as a reliable, um, all right, uh, uh, way of measuring policy agenda because, as I said, it, it implies some some costs. And so, uh, the, the models are basically this one. So, uh, I have the uh, the public issue science measured by the the most important problem question, most important <coughs> issue question in in the, in the surveys, and I imply that. Uh, yesterday's preferences, priorities uh, might affect today's uh, speeches. So, and then we have the vulnerability and, uh, and the, what I call issue advantage. Uh, and then, of course, if we want to see how this medi uh, the, the mediation, I, I created an interaction term between vulnerability and issue advantage, which is a, a basically a, a dummy variable whether the government has, a, an, a, has an historical advantage on the issue or it doesn't. And for the, uh, instead for the rhetorical responsiveness uh, model, I uh, have yeah, still the same uh, speeches as the dependent variable, but then uh, since responsiveness is given by the, 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 the interaction between citizens' priorities and, and, and the dependent variable, uh, I created a, a, a two-way interaction term. Uh, so I have time series cross-section data. I'm not going to... Uh, show you all the regression tables, but I just want to summarize for you what I uh, still found preliminarily. So, uh, let's say for the policy agenda uh, model, uh, what I found is a consistent across uh, is a consistent finding across uh, across uh, policy areas, and and there's a policy uh, sorry a positive relationship between uh, government electoral vulnerability and. Uh, the, the, the attention and the speeches, which means that uh, the, the safer the governments are, the more likely uh, they emphasize the certain issues in, the, in, the, in their agenda. Uh, and this is, uh, and it is supposed to be true for uh, seven out of nine uh, policy, policy categories. And rather, in, uh, when, I, when we incorporate the, the the, the issue advantage in the model, uh, there still is a, a positive relationship, but uh, as you can see, the, the, the number of cases in which this is significant uh, drops down a bit. For responsiveness instead, uh, the story is a, a bit more ambiguous because uh, Sometimes, uh, when the when governments are, are vulnerable, they really, uh, in order to be re-elected, they really emphasise uh, issues and uh, and they are responsive to what the public want. But on the other side, I found also uh, some support for the kind of safeness uh, story of the side of the story, which is that uh, the more they are safe, the more they are responsive instead. And. So, uh, just to conclude, uh, what I found is that actually what all the previous researchers found is that there is no, actually there is no pattern here because it really depends on the, on the policy area and, and actually we don't even find a pattern, in, uh, in, I don't know, in health uh, in all the countries or, uh, so it really, uh, it really depends on the, I guess, on the, on the policy agenda uh, and on the formation of the of the agenda, and but uh, the other preliminary findings are that uh, yes, uh, the one for the policy agenda is that governments yes tend to talk more about uh, uh, about certain issues when they are safe. Uh, so maybe they, they they try to blur some issues when they are instead vulnerable. And but actually this is important. Uh, there's a causal link here which might, uh, we, which has to be discovered better because we, uh, the point is that they are safe because they are responsive or they are responsive because they are safe. 
So it's something that I would like to 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 see better in future versions. And the, the, as I said, the, the the results for responsiveness are, uh, are quite quite mixed. So I find some support for both the the vulnerability and safeness uh, thesis. And so uh, I tried to self-analyze myself, and I found already some. Uh, <laughs> Uh, drawback and, and things that I want to address in future versions. So, of course, this link that I was talking about a moment ago, uh, because it's really important. Because uh, I don't know, we, we we don't know then what we, what drives what. And uh, uh, a second important thing is that I used a, very, a not really fine grained measure of uh, of uh, issue advantage uh, because of lack of. Uh, of, of data here, so uh, I would like to collect more data on issue competence and come out with a uh, with a more sophisticated measure. And uh, another suggestion is that uh, I'm looking at <coughs> macro topics here uh, as they are um, uh, collected by the Comparative Agenda project. So it might be the case that uh, I might find more support for my hypothesis if I look into uh, micro topics. So. Uh, I don't know, we try to um, uh, decompose uh, the macroeconomics issues into, uh, more, uh, into, into more specific issues. But, and then, yes, the, the, the paper doesn't have any other additional controls. Uh, so, uh, for instance, my, uh, economics controls such as unemployment, inflation, and so on. So I, I will also incorporate this and see uh, if the models are really robust. And uh, that's it. Thanks a lot for your attention.